Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. What about formatting? As we saw earlier, again, any bind type uh, can be specified to help send back data in the client's requested type, or if you have to, if the server is going to dictate what type, and the server's um, response, they can dictate exactly what type is going to be sent back. The nice thing about uh, JAX-RS is it's already been buckled to the Java architecture for XML binding. It's known as JAX-B. And if you've used SOAP, you're probably very familiar with this API. It was what allowed us to take any kind of a Java beam and using this uh, binding, allow for it to be marshaled and unmarshaled in the SOAP XML format. Well, the same API is also used by the JAX RS community to help marshal and unmarshal our Java data, our Java objects into types that include things like XML, but also things like JSON. So how does that work? Well, let's say that you and I, in our RESTful web service, want to communicate student information. So we develop a very simple student class. And that student class represents uh, information like our student's ID, their name, grades, things of that nature. We'd have maybe setters and getters and constructors in that student. In addition to that, we provide a JAXB annotation on that class. Now, this is a JAXB annotation, not a JAXRS, uh, not a RESTful annotation, if you will. This is a JAXB annotation, the same kind of annotation that you would use if you were doing a SOAP-based web service. And what we're dictating is, in this case, that student can be represented as an XML document, in this case with a root element name of student. By providing this base class, this student POJO, with the JAXB annotation, we can then use those JAXB annotated types in our RESTful web service world. So in a resource I'm calling student resource, where I've got a path that maps uh, the URI of slash students to that resource, on a get request, you'll notice here I've got a method called get student. Notice this time, however, I'm not returning a simple string or void or anything of that nature, not even a primitive. What I'm returning is a student object out of this RESTful web service. Now, what happens? Well, JAXRS takes a look at the student class and notices that it has the JAXB annotation, and so it will now use that mechanism along with the app produces application XML and recognizes that what I want to do is take my return student object and return that in XML format. So as long as my JAXRS methods return a type that is JAXB annotated, then what I get back is formatting that, that might be in something other than simple string or comma separated type of information. Again, we're going to need a couple things for that. We're going to need the JAXB annotated classes, and we'll need the app produces to specify exactly what type of data we intend to return with, in this case, XME. So XML is being marshaled out to our clients based on how we have things annotated in our domain classes, things like student, as well as via the JAXRS annotations. Now, if you think that's cool, how about doing the same kind of thing in JSON format? Well, you can use the same student class, in fact, uh, the same student uh, class out there and annotate it and simply have our method, our resource method, as producing application JSON. Again, we'll return a student class, but given the JAX uh, B annotations, it knows to marshal that information out now in JSON format, which is what we see here. One other thing here, obviously, is that we need the ability to have a, a JAXRS and our JAXB environment understand JSON, so that's why those additional jar files you'll find out there as part of the Jersey implementation are needed so that that uh, marshing and unmarshing can occur in this case in JSON format. In fact, JAXRS implementation supports all sorts of representations and formatting. For example, the REST Easy API that JBoss provides, they actually support Atom representations. So you can send out representations of your resources, not only in XML and JSON and things like text and comma separated value, but also in Atom as well. And many more of these types are being produced by all sorts of different organizations um, out there in the open source community. So before you uh, before you take a look at REST and 
and maybe shoot it down because it's not providing a mechanism to get out data in your particular required format, take a look out there in the open source community and you're starting to find lots of groups starting to add APIs, add capabilities to get data out in all sorts of formats. By the way, for uh, for those of you who are looking at JSON saying, what the heck is JSON? If you're just entering into the RESTful community, and maybe you've been dealing with SOAP quite a while, but haven't seen some of these other simpler formats, uh, JSON is a, a, a technology, it's a, an acronym for a JavaScript object notation. It's a technology that's been used quite a bit in things like uh, AJAX environments. Again, it was a lighter weight uh, interchange of data. So typically uh, seen as a much lighter weight than, say, XML-based uh, communication. But it is also, just like XML, uh, human-readable and text-based, so we don't need some sort of binary reader to be able to take a look at this data. That is on the plus side. And many people prefer, in particular in the REST community, JSON over XML, again, because there are a lot fewer characters, so we're talking about a much lighter weight, uh, less... Uh, structure, if you will, around the uh, JSON types, which usually means they're faster and easier to parse and work with. On the counter side, the XML both describes the data as well as provides you the data. If you'll notice in uh, JSON, there is some description, but may not be quite to the extent in, that, uh, say, what uh, SOAP XML provides. And validation of that information is a bit tougher as well. But since we're talking about uh, RESTful, as a lighter means of providing web services, it's probably not surprising to you then to see that uh, JSON is often favored because, again, just like uh, REST is a lighter weight means of doing web services, JSON is a lighter weight means of doing data exchange. Here's a little bit of an example if you're looking for, can I see a little bit more JSON to see what it looks like? Here I provided um, a golfer element, or if you will, a golfer set of data in XML. So we can see all sorts of elements dictating the shape and makeup of a golfer, and then in between or wedged in between those elements is the data, and also specified by attributes. Now let's take a look at the same thing by JSON. So here we have the same data, but one in XML format and one in JSON format. So you can see, again, lighter weight, a little bit uh, fewer characters, tends to be something that can be processed maybe a little bit more quickly than something like a SOAP-based XML message. If you're looking for more information on JSON, there are tons of online resources out there, gang. Just go out and uh, your favorite Google search engine, Google or Yahoo, and uh, type uh, JSON, and uh, you'll be taken to wonderful tutorial sites. I've also placed some of the uh, resources in my list of resources uh, for RESTful community that uh, will help assist you in uh, a tutorial on JSON as well. Let's talk a little bit more about how these RESTful Web Services and JEX RS operate underneath the covers. As we see, they're just plain old Java objects annotated to dictate the format, annotated for us to be able to receive and send out, send out all sorts of uh, parameter data. Uh, one other thing we might want to dictate, though, by annotations is how they operate inside the server environment. What do I mean by that? Well, again, since these are just plain old Java objects, uh, by default, what happens in this JAXRS environment is that for each request that comes in, an instance of our resource gets created and it responds to that request. Well, that's simple enough. Obviously, that creates some issues, as you can imagine, with regard to um, how fast it can do that. Uh, if you're talking about a system that needs to respond to millions and millions of requests, that certainly takes a hit on the response time and potentially also on the scale of our application. So how can we maybe improve that a bit? Well, there are a couple of annotations to help provide additional life cycles to our resources in our JAX RS environment. One is the at singleton annotation. So we put at singleton on, in this case, our resource, our POJO. And now what do we get? Well, we get a single instance of that particular resource that's used for all requests. Now, that's both good and bad, as we would find in any environment where we talk about the scalability. One instance, but now what do we have to worry about? Well, obviously, the multiple threads that go through that particular instance. If you don't like that, we also have the at per session annotation. as kind of a medium between the uh, singleton and per request type of uh, resource. The at per session allows us to signify that we'd like that resource to be created as a new instance uh, for each client session. When the client session goes away, then that particular instance goes away. You might notice, too, with regard to these particular annotations, that is the at singleton, the at per session, these annotations are Jersey implementation specific. In other words, the JAX RS uh, API, the specification today, 
doesn't deal with these additional life cycle uh, capabilities. So if you're using these annotations to help with scalability or performance, recognize you are tending towards the Jersey implementation specifics. In fact, you'll find that you have to import Com Sun Jersey uh, names as part of your application code. That may change at some point in the future, but at least today those are locked into Jersey. You'll find similar types of implementations in some of the other RESTful implementations of JAX-RS out there. In other words, they provide the JAX-RS API, but then some additional capability to handle things like the lifecycle. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.